Living in the USA, getting an SBR, a short-barreled rifle, is a pain-in-the-ass process. You have to do the NFA dance with a tax stamp and paying $200 for it. As if this is not already enough, you also have to wait and wait and wait. It takes months for it to get through. And in the end, what do you get? Well, you can install a stock and a vertical foregrip. Yeah. Is it worth it? Well, for some it is, and others it isn't. For those who have to save themselves the weight, money, and frustration, they just don't have to go for a pistol with a stabilizing brace instead of the stock. However, sometimes there is just no brace available, or the gun either doesn't look good with it, or does not give you the right feeling. So or so, in the end, it's a big decision if you go pistol or go SBR. For those who think about going the route of a short-barreled rifle, well, here are some pistol-caliber guns that are actually worth it. Number 5. SIG MPX 9mm SIG announced a new submachine gun in 2013, surprising the shooter community. After all, who needs that? Everybody was going for compact carbines and rifle calibers that could easily outdo anything chambered for a pistol round. However, the truth is that pistol caliber weapons bigger than the pistols itself still have their value. They come with a reduced felt recoil. Their ammo is inexpensive, and the guns themselves are more on the light side of the weapon market. In other words, what is there not to like? They are, after all, pretty effective when it comes to shorter ranges, carrying them for a long time or using them inside buildings. Hold back for a moment before you start to type your comments about the felt recoil. Yes, there are a lot of submachine guns out there that use a direct blowback action. This is a simple and reliable action that also does not cost an arm and a leg. It also increases reliability, but we all know it also adds weight and increases the felt recoil disproportionately. However, when it comes to high quality pistol caliber guns, you get other types of actions. In the case of the MPX, SIG went with a short stroke piston action. This keeps the reciprocating mass down and also reduces the felt recoil significantly. Using a lock breech, the gun does not unlock until the internal pressure drop to safe levels. With this system, you get a gun that's very soft shooting and well suited for using a suppressor. To make this gun better for the average shooter, its ergonomics are similar to the AR-15, making it easier to transition to it. Altogether, this means that this gun is perfect for turning it into an SBR. To support the short and short-barreled rifle, the receiver of the MPX is not very long, and the stock is collapsible. This creates a perfectly balanced subgun and small package. Also, the barrel can easily be swapped out. With so many positives, there comes one downside. You guessed it, it's the cost. The gun and its magazines are on the pricier side. However, shooting 9mm is cheap so that you can save here. Number 4, HK MP5 9mm. The HK MP5 is old, but still the king of the ring. This gun has been chosen by the SAS and countless law enforcement agencies, as well as other military units. Why? Because it's simply the best. Made from stamp steel, it's a little bit heavier, and it does not accept Glock magazines as unbelievable as that might sound. Okay, jokes aside, of course it's not as modular as more modern designs, but when it comes to accuracy and reliability, it just beats them all. You might want to call it the little brother of the G3 rifle as it uses the same roller delayed action. Chambered in 9mm, it shoots ultra soft. The heavier weight does its own to reduce the felt recoil. There are several versions from different manufacturers available ranging from expensive to very expensive, but completely leaving out the budget or affordable portion of the market. However, thanks to its caliber, you get cheap ammo for it. Why should you turn the MP5 into an SBR? Because it's much more comfortable to shoot with its original polymer fixed stock than with anything else. Glassable stocks help with the size and transportation, but it is the original fixed stock that gives you the best of the best. If you go for braces, you will be even more disappointed. Then there's a problem with the MP5K, which comes with an iconic vertical grip, which is a no-go for a pistol. To make it right, it is the SBR you need. Number 3. Chris Vector 10mm The Chris Vector chambered in 10mm gives you a very controllable yet very strong SBR, being almost as powerful as some 44 Magnum loads. The Vector itself is a blowback design using a Super V recoil mitigation system. This allows you to shoot it with a very high rate of fire while still keeping it under control. The recoil mitigation systems redirects the recoil impulse downward. Even in long full auto bursts, you can easily keep it on target. At the same time, the felt recoil is reduced to the levels of a 9mm. Now, before you get only mags with a capacity of 15 rounds for the 10mm model, 
But now there are also magazines with a capacity of 33 rounds available. This gives you the firepower you need as an SBR. The Vector is short enough to be easily maneuverable while it gets the right ergonomics with the stock. This kind of firepower does come with a downside, which is the price of the ammo. 10mm rounds are not exactly known for their affordability. If you need to keep the price down, you can work with a reloading setup. If you need a cheap plinking gun, it's better to choose another one, as the advantage of this weapons are really meant for a fight, not just fun shooting. However, if you decide one, you get high power rounds, a good capacity, and a very reliable gun. Number 2. Uzi Carbine 9mm Granted, looking at the Uzi, you see that it's everything but an ultra-modern gun. It's not modular, but weighs a lot, and good luck trying to feed it with Glock magazines. But enough of the trash talk, and these days the Uzi was the non-plus ultra when it comes to submachine guns. That alone is a good reason to go SBR with it. But it's not just the classic look in history. The Uzi is accurate even with today's standards, and is reliable. It has proven itself with the IDF many times thanks to it being built like a tank. Made of steel, this explains its rather hefty weight. Don't forget that keeps this great gun going and soaks up the recoil. If this is not enough to convince you, then you need to take a look at how to convert it to an SBR. The process is easy. Usually, the barrel is already short enough, so all you need to add is a stock that fits you. Chambered in 9mm, it shoots inexpensive ammo, and it feeds without any problems. Even the magazines with a capacity of 32 rounds are affordable. Finally, if anyone tries to get on your nerves asking why you went through all of this, just answer, it's an Uzi 9mm. That explains everything. Number 1. AR-15 and 9mm Yes, the AR-15 has to be on this list as the whole system is very modular, super accurate, and you get some really affordable versions. 9mm, however, many of them come as a direct blowback system. This gets you more weight and more felt recoil. However, there are better systems out there. One example is the CMMG Banshee with a rotary delayed action. You can get it 9mm, 45 ACP, and 10mm auto. It comes with affordable magazines and the same handling as all other ARs. This makes it also a great candidate for an SBR. There you have it guys. There are more rifles out there that makes great SBRs, but these here are by far the best candidates for the taxi.